Okay, so I'm going to talk to you guys today about positive self-talk and thought stopping, which is a sports psychology technique used to improve your positive self-talk during matches. So a lot of people don't, a lot of athletes don't realize that um, their thoughts have a huge impact on their performance, whether they're negative or positive. So negative thoughts cause a snowball effect of more and more stress and anxiety. And the more, until it's kind of addressed, it's, you're going to keep having these negative thoughts. So, um, you know, as a team, we've really seen the effects of having positive energy, and that's something we've really been working on. And um, so I want to give you guys some ways to deal with this and address it so we can work to increase positive thinking as much as possible. <clears throat> the first step to doing this is kind of becoming aware of what your negative thoughts are and in what situations you're most likely to be negative. So what I want you guys to do now is think of a situation during a match, whether it's you double faulted two times in a row, you miss an easy shot, something like that. Think about a situation that happens to you often and think about the negative thought that you comes to mind for you most often. I want you guys to write that down. And so we'll come back in a second and talk about it. <coughs> Ready? Yeah. Who wants to volunteer to read their statement? So let's, how about you say what the situation was and then read the statement following that. Okay, who wants, who wants to volunteer? First row, Nicole. Um, so over the weekend when we were playing doubles, um, I missed a pretty easy backhand that I usually can hit um, with like easily doing matches and I missed it in the bottom of the net. So I said to myself, you're literally so bad at tennis. And it kind of <laughs> Yeah. Um, and I think that um, if it wasn't like since it was doubles, I had the benefit of having my partner to like bring me back up. But like it could have gone really bad if it just kept going. Okay. So good. Most of that happens to you a lot. Those kinds of things where you say to yourself that it's, you miss an easy shot and you say I'm so bad. At tennis. Yeah. Okay. It's more just like that kind of line comes out of my mouth. I'm so bad at tennis. Okay. Yep. Who else? Abby. So it pretty much happens anytime that I don't get to a ball or I just miss a ball because I didn't move my feet. And I say that you're literally the slowest person of all time. <laughs> okay. Which probably isn't even true. And then it just gets me in a bad mood. Yeah. Because it's not good. Yeah. Okay, let's have one more. Brooke, go ahead. I'm not, I don't say like mean things to myself like that, but it's like my tone of voice. I'm very frustrated. So I guess like I'm going to try and calculate, encapsulate that. Are you kidding me? Watch the freaking ball. It's so easy. Focus. So like it's kind of like demeaning to myself and then I like I guess it yeah it snowballs and then um, the next point I'm probably not that super focused for it yeah so let's think about that for a second so you two are doubles partners like imagine if if you said that to Nicole if you were like what, what was your statement if I said to you you're literally the slowest <laughs> person all the time no, but seriously like that it's in all seriousness like that does have an effect like the negative self-talk that you have with yourself is the same thing as if someone else was saying that same thing to you. Like it, it doesn't, it's weird to think about it, but it actually is like the exact same thing, maybe even worse because you have, like it was probably pretty easy for you guys to think of those negative statements, right? So like you're, you're continuously having these thoughts. So that's how, you know, it's, I can't stress enough how important that is to address those negative thoughts. So next I'm going to have you guys um, change your negative statement and reframe it into a positive one. Um, so three things you have to think about when you're when you're reframing them. So um, obviously they have to be positive. They have to be short, relatively short statements, and they have to be something that's under your control. So before I let you guys do that, I will give you a personal example of when I played in college, so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about and kind of understand more what I'm saying. So when I play, I will openly admit, I'm sure I've told you guys this, I was like really negative all the time. For my, especially for my first three years in college, I just had such high expectations, and I was like, I guess I was kind of a 
perfectionist. I expected perfection every time. But like for me, what that meant was I expected to like feel great every time I played. Like I expected my strokes to like feel amazing, which like obviously you guys know like never happens, or maybe sometimes, but not often. So I literally, like you guys, similar to you guys, I would say to myself like, I get in like the second game and I'd be like, what is wrong with you? Why can't you just relax and like play the point? And um, so yeah, I just, it was bad. And like I said, it snowballed, it was a snowball effect. I had like very little self-confidence and it was just really bad. But by my senior year, I kind of figured out that, I guess, I figured out that I needed to change something because I was losing a lot of singles matches and I was really miserable playing tennis and like being on the team. And I was like, this is my senior year. I have to change something or like, I'm gonna regret this. So I guess I'll explain this in a minute, but I started using thought stopping. And what I did was I would reframe a statement that I had like that. So instead of saying like, you're so terrible, why can't you relax and just play the point? I would, I would take a deep breath and I would say, instead of that, I would say, okay, I'm gonna embrace this tightness and know that it's natural and I'm gonna put my entire focus on moving my feet as best as I can. So that's under my control. That was a relatively short, that's kind of a long statement, but relatively short and um, it was under my control. Moving my feet was under my control. Relaxing was under my control. I could take a deep breath. So that was my kind of example for you guys. So now you can look at your negative statements and kind of try to reframe that in a way that's more positive. So go ahead, do that for one minute. <clears throat> Okay, who wants to read read their positive statements? So how about if you haven't read yours, read your negative one and then finish with your positive one. Yes. Well, you heard my negative one, negative one, but my positive one would probably be like saying something around like, for, okay, forget about it and focus on some kind of strategy that I had, whatever it be, like hit to the forehand, hit to the backhand. Okay. Um, Really that sense. Yeah, so that's good because that's under your control. You can hit it to whatever the side is weaker and it's short. So you would just say like something like, I'm going to just refocus and hit it to her backhand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's good. That's a good one. Anyone else? I can go with no one you want to say. Someone new? No. <clears throat> um, like this last weekend, I, well, I mean, this past week I've been having a lot of problems with my servers and like, I double faulted a lot this last weekend, so I would have a lot of negative thoughts going like throughout doubles and singles, and I'd be like, do you even know how to serve? And like, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, that went through my mind a lot, but like a way I would rephrase it would be like, you know, I would tell myself it's okay, like, you know, I can take my time after each serve and then just try to like focus on your toss instead of like thinking about some big things. So. Okay, so you kept that short and kind of like in, under your control, yeah. so that's good. Okay, anyone else? Okay, so, yeah, so these positive affirmations, they need to be practiced every day, like during practice as often as you can and also during matches, or I'm sorry, during just your day-to-day -day routines, but so what we just talked about were more match-specific and situation-specific um, statements, so which is great, but they don't always have to be match-specific, especially like with you guys when we're just going to start implementing more positive self-talk, you want them to be more um, maybe practice-related, so um, a good way to begin that is to come up with three to four affirmations that you say to yourself um, as often as possible in practice and even as much as you can, like I said, throughout each day. So I actually just read an article about Serena Williams and she was talking about positive self-talk and what she said was that she swears by, she, what she does is she enters as her passcode in her um, computer and on her phone. She uses affirmations so that she always gets that positive trigger every day when she's like entering those. So that was an interesting, I thought that was interesting. So um, let's think about, so like for example, one person could have the following three affirmations. I'm mentally tough, I'm able to bounce back quickly from mistakes, and something like, 
my legs are strong and powerful or something like that. So those are three positive statements. I mean, they obviously have to relate to you. Those are just three random ones. But um, and you want to just say those as much as you can. And what will happen is they'll start to like get ingrained into your, into your mind. And that will like train your mind to kind of like start thinking that way, start being more positive. So, okay. So let's say that you've been working on those techniques, those affirmations, you've been repeating them to yourselves, um, and you're ready to kind of take the next step and sort of, I guess, implement more techniques into matches. So uh, one example of a technique you can use is called thought stopping, like I mentioned before. So what you would do, um, let's say you're in the third set of a match, and you're feeling really fatigued, and you find yourself between points being really negative, and after one point you say to yourself something like, um, you know, I'm so tired, I'm never going to outlast this girl. Like, I'm just, I'm going to lose. And you're just like being really negative. So what you can do right there, so close your eyes for like one second and visualize a stop sign, literally like a stop sign. That's the first step, and that's a visual cue. The second step would be a verbal cue, which is saying the word stop to yourself, either in your head or just like quietly out loud. So that's stop. That's a verbal cue. And then the third step would be to um, snap your finger once or like hit your thigh or something like that. So that would be the physical physical cue. And that is what um, would kind of signal the end of the negative thought, if that makes sense. And then, but the most crucial part of that probably is the fourth step, which is replacing that negative thought with a positive thought. So um, let's say for that example, I said you'd be tired, you were tired and you felt like you weren't gonna outlast this girl. So to replace that, you can use go through the whole thought stopping process and replace that with something, um, something like you know I'm I prepared and trained so hard for this moment and I know that I'm gonna outlast this girl and then you just move on. That's the next point. So that's an example. That's thought stopping and that's kind of a brief introduction to positive self talk. But um, Thought stopping, just one other important note, it's important to kind of like practice that and practice matches and sets before you actually use it in a match just because it would be hard to, um, you might not be totally confident using it in a match if you don't first practice it. So yeah, um, I guess it'll definitely take a while for you guys to like become aware of your negative thoughts just because that's not something that's totally natural to do. But the more you actively think about it and try to be more aware of your thoughts, the easier it'll, be, it'll become. So, um, I mean, I know from experience it definitely made a difference in the way that I played. And by my senior year, I was playing some of the best tennis in my, that I ever played. So, from a personal perspective, I would definitely recommend doing it. So, any questions? Do you guys have any thoughts? Or, like, do you think it's something you guys could see yourselves starting to implement? Do you feel like you're pretty negative on the court in general, or just like person by person, it's probably different? I mean, there's always negative negativity, but it's definitely something everyone can use, right? Mm -hmm.